Make way. By order of His Majesty, King James, Sovereign of the Kingdom of Aragon and Catalonia, defender of our holy Christian faith and conqueror of the Moors, a disputation to be heard here in this year of our Lord 1261 between the representatives of the Christian and the Jewish faith. Friar Pablo Cristiani of the Order of Saint Dominic maintains that passages in the Talmud indicate the Messiah has already come. His opponent shall be Moses ben Nachman, chief rabbi of the kingdom. It is so ordered. You may proceed. Your Majesty, I believe that I can prove based upon the passages in the Jewish scripture that the Messiah has come in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rabbi, do you believe that the Messiah has come? No. I believe and I know that he has not yet come. And as for the Christian claim made for Jesus, it is impossible for me to believe that he is the Messiah. For the prophet says of the Messiah, he shall rule from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Jesus, however, did not rule as king over any kingdom. Indeed, he did not rule over anyone. During his lifetime, he was persecuted by his enemies, and he hid from them. In the end, he fell into their hands and was unable to save himself. How then could one expect him to save the people of Israel? Even after his death, he had no kingdom, for the might of the Roman Empire was not due to him. On the contrary, before Rome began to believe in him, Rome ruled over vast regions of the earth. But after they came to believe in him, Rome lost many of these kingdoms. Indeed, nowadays, the followers of Muhammad have an even greater empire than the Christians. As it is said by the prophet Isaiah, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. From the days of Jesus until now, the entire world has been filled with violence and robbery. Indeed, the Christians are amongst the most warlike they spill more blood than the rest of the nations. And they lead immoral lives. How difficult it would be for you, my Lord King, if these knights around us would not learn war anymore. Rabbi, must it be your constant practice to deliver such long-winded speeches? I have a question. Rabbi. The rules of the disputation are, Fry Paul asks the questions, you respond. Therefore, I must ask for your silence. Fry Paul, you may proceed. There is a section in Isaiah, Behold, my servant shall prosper, which deals with the death of the Messiah and how he was handed over into the hands of the wicked, as it was with our Lord Jesus Christ. Rabbi, do you believe that this chapter deals with the Messiah? According to its true meaning, it speaks only generally of the people of Israel. For the prophet clearly states who is the servant by saying, Israel, my servant, or, O Jacob, my servant. I see from the words of your sages that it does then speak of the Messiah. It is true that our rabbis of blessed memory interpret the passage in the books of Haggadah in connection with the Messiah. 
but they never said that he will be killed by his enemy. You will not find in any Jewish religious book, not in the Talmud, not in the book of Haggadah, that the Messiah, son of David, will be killed. And absolutely not that he will be handed over to his enemies and buried with the wicked. If you will allow me, I will prove to you that the passage in question has no reference to the fact that he was killed, as was the case with your Messiah. We do not wish to hear this explanation of yours. Rabbi, I ask you, do you believe that the Messiah of whom the prophet spoke will be an actual man or a real God? Truly the Messiah who will come will be utterly a man, a son born of the union of a man and woman just as I am. He will be descended from King David and his descendants. As it is written, there will come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse. If, as you say, the Holy Ghost is not of the stock of Jesse, then it cannot provide Jesus with a claim to descent from David. Neither can Joseph, husband of Mary, provide him with the claim to descent from David, if, as you say, he was not the father of Jesus. And even if Mary is claimed to be of the stock of Jesse, this would avail Jesus nothing, for he cannot inherit the kingdom according to the laws of the Torah. Daughters and their seed do not inherit if there is a male descendant, and David always had male descendants. Therefore, Jesus cannot inherit through his mother. Also, it will be the task of the Messiah to gather together the banished of Israel and the dispersed ones of Judah. But Jesus did not gather anyone. The Messiah will rule over all people. Jesus could not rule over himself. My Lord King, Hear me out. The essence of our dispute does not depend on the question of the Messiah. The key conflict between the Jews and the Christians concerns itself with your conception of God, a conception that is entirely unacceptable to the mind. My Lord King, you are a Christian, a Christian son born of a Christian father and mother all your life. You have heard the monks and priests preaching and speaking to you of Jesus' birth. They have filled your mind and the marrow of your bones with this thing, and it now comes to you as a matter of habit. Yet that which you believe, reason cannot accept, nature rejects, and the prophets never said such a thing. <laughs> Furthermore, even miracles cannot extend themselves to this, that the creator of heaven and of earth and all that is in between shall become an embryo in the womb of a Jewish woman, shall be born a tiny creature, shall then grow up and later be handed over to his enemies that they shall kill him. And then you claim that he has risen from the dead and that he has returned to his former state. <sighs> My Lord, such beliefs cannot convince a Jew or any other sensible human being. You voice your opinions in vain and to no avail, for this is the root of the controversy between us. I am Dionysus, 